We knew the time would come eventually, but it's definitely past time that we begin talking about how to deal with data that isn't just numbers. The problem is, before we can do that, there is one shocking revelation that we have to get through, which is that all data is numbers if we're storing it inside of a computer. And so what we have to figure out is if we want to store data that isn't actual uh, numerical data, so arithmetic or, or whatever, uh, we need some way of representing it by numbers. And hopefully we need some way of doing that that doesn't waste our time and our mental energy. So what we're going to begin talking about now is how to deal with characters of text. Um, in a lot of languages, storing text is way easier than it is in C. But unfortunately in C, because of how primitive all of the operations we can perform are, storing text can be a bit of a pain. So all we're going to talk about today is how do we work with text one character at a time. So I have a variable here called ch, and we can see that I'm assigning it this. Notice how I've put a character in single quotes. What I'm saying is store the character uppercase a into the variable. And if I were drawing this out on a diagram, I would actually draw it as the character uppercase a. So I'd say it's, the, it's a single character uppercase a. And a notational um, thing here is that when we use single quotations to refer to one character, a single character. Now you're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, wait a minute, the type of the variable is int. Isn't that supposed to be a number? Well, yeah, and it is. It turns out that the way that we process characters in a computer is we just take uh, each character that we could possibly represent and we assign it some numerical value. And if you're curious, and you should be, the way that we could figure out what number it is is by printing it out. So we'll print it out with percent %d, which says take the number printed out in base 10 decimal representation. So we'll save this. We'll try compiling it. Uh, there we go. And it prints out that ch is the number 65. OK, that's nice. Let's try uh, what happens if I use the character uppercase b. 66, interesting. So one thing we have to understand in this course, we do not care that A is equal to 65. We don't care at all. We don't care that B is equal to 66. That makes no difference to us. Notice that in my code, I don't ever have to remember that B equals 66 because I'm always allowed to represent a character by putting it in single quotes. You might also look at this and say, wait, why is it 65? Why not 1 or 0? And the answer is, we've given character codes to a lot of different characters, and we don't really care what number they get. We just care that every time I need an uppercase A, I can tell the compiler to go figure out what character code it is. A long time ago, this was also a concern because different computer systems might use different numbers to represent characters. These days, that's much less likely. Odds are every computer system you will ever come into contact with does use the same numbering, but that's no reason that we should take it for granted. We still should try never to actually use those numbers. Um, and so that means if you ever need to talk about the numerical value of a character, you write it like this. Whenever you put a character in single quotes, the compiler, when it works on your code, goes through and subs in the actual numerical value. Here it was 66. So we should never have to worry about that ourselves. Okay, so the next question is, if characters have numerical values, that means I guess I can convert from a character to a number, but how do I print it back out as its corresponding character? And we have an option for that too. We use the percent %c um, format specifier in printf. If I use percent %c, I'm telling printf, take this number, convert it back to a character, and then print it out. ch is a. Um, and actually, why don't we print it out in both representations? So we'll print out ch twice, once as an actual character, once in its numerical representation. All right, so ch is a, the character, and 65, the number. Now, there are a few things about this character encoding, which is what we call the assignment of numbers to characters, that are sort of nice. We've already seen one of them. It turns out that although it's weird that a, uppercase a is 65, uppercase b is 66, uppercase c is 67, and uppercase d is 68, and so on. All of the uppercase letters are next to each other um, in the 
character encoding in, in their numerical encodings. And the same is true of lowercase letters. In fact, we should also observe that because it's an int, we are allowed to perform operations on it just like any other int. I could say ch equals ch plus 1, and we'll try that out. So of course, we started at 65, and ch plus 1 is going to be 66. And the character value, as we've seen before, will be uppercase b. There it is. And so we can perform all the same arithmetic on it as any other int because it is an int. It just happens to be one we are using to represent a character. Now in this course, it's important that we do try and keep these things separate in our heads. Yes, we're using a variable of type int, but if we happen to be using it to store a character, we should actually write it as a character on our diagram. We don't want to have to remember that it's equal to 65. That makes no difference to us. And to be clear, you will never be expected in this course to know the numerical code associated with a particular character. You will be expected to understand that a character can be converted into a number and is when you store it in an int, but it doesn't make any difference what that number actually is. And every other character on your keyboard also has a character code, and you know I encourage you to go take a look to figure out uh, what the, take a look at the character codes for some of the other characters we have. Let's try, I don't know, the pound sign. So let's take a look. The pound sign is character number 35 for some reason. If I add one, I get the dollar sign. Well, that's convenient. Fair enough. We don't care. All we care is that there is a conversion between these numbers and the character values themselves. Now, the reason that I want to talk about this now is we're going to begin talking about how to get input from the user, and the user can easily provide input through the keyboard. So we need to know some way of taking those characters that the user types in and working with them. So if we go back to this example here, uh, we'll say, okay, ch equals uppercase a. There are a few things that we can do with our characters, uh, basic operations like asking if it's a letter, asking if it is lowercase or uppercase, or asking other questions like, is it some kind of a space character that we should also know something about? And we'll talk about those in the next video. One thing I want to talk about at the very end of this one, though, is we have the ability to store characters in an int, but how do we get a character from the user? User. So let's try that down here. Um, I'm going to make a new variable, character from user, and I'm going to ask the user, enter a character. And then I'm going to say character from user, I'm going to do an assignment statement, equals, and I'm going to call a function. And maybe you might notice in my code, I never define this function. This is a function provided by the language via the C standard library. So somewhere, somebody has written C code for this function, get char. And uh, the, C, the C language comes with what we call a library. And a library in general is a collection of code that somebody else has written that you can bring into your project and use. And in particular, the C language comes with a library called the C standard library, which includes a whole bunch of functions and other definitions that are helpful um, when you're writing C code. One of the functions that we've already been using is called printf. And the C standard library is divided up into parts. And the way that we bring in a particular part of the library is with this statement here, hash include. And the different parts of the library uh, have different names. This is the standard IO library. When we bring this in, we get a bunch of functions that have to do with input and output. Printf is for output, and getchar is one of the various functions provided for input. So when you call the getchar function, it reads one character from the user. And so I guess we should read a character from the user and then print out you entered. And then I'll print it out as both a character and uh, as a number. So I have to print it out twice. There we go. And let's try running that. All right says enter a character and you'll notice that it's giving me a little flashing cursor there and the program is stalled that is because it is waiting for me to do something so i'll enter a character let's enter i don't know x i press enter you entered x that's the character and it has the value 120 we'll try it again i'll enter uppercase a 
There I did, I entered uppercase A, and it has the numerical value 65. So I want to just conclude by pointing out one other thing. The next videos we'll talk about how do we use getchar, let's say, in a loop to read lots of characters from the user. But one thing I want to point out is the way that input gets read. So this is actually not this, uh, a C thing. This has to do with the way that our virtual lab environment and the operating system of this computer work. Um, so inside our virtual lab environment, we are actually running programs on a virtual machine that you're accessing through your browser. And it is a machine that has an operating system and the operating system is what governs how a program receives its input and produces its output. So it says, enter a character. Now I'm gonna enter a whole bunch of characters. Okay, but you, you might've noticed I did enter a character and the program didn't do anything. So to be clear, here's what's really happening. When I type stuff in, the program isn't allowed to see any of the characters I've typed until I press enter. So I press enter and it does read that character that I entered, the first character. Until I press enter, the operating system doesn't give the characters to the program. That means that if even if you only want one character, the user does have to press enter before the program is allowed to see that character. And you'll notice that even though I entered lots and lots of characters, I only called getchar once. And so the only character I received was the first one that was entered. I guess I'll, um, I'll try calling getchar multiple times just to, to prove my point. So once you press enter, all of the characters you entered become available to the program. And the opera, and when you call getchar, it'll read the first character and then throw it away. So after it's read, you get a copy of it, but then it's removed. And then the second one and the third one, every time you call getchar, you get the next character from the stream of input. And it turns out even the uh, new line character at the end, when you press enter, is available to your program if it wants it. Uh, so we'll try this one more time. Okay, enter some care. I'll just enter a whole bunch of stuff. Notice that I call getchar two times, and here it reads S is my first character and D is my second one. So you might notice it's a bit weird that you press one character and the program does nothing. That's because the program doesn't see what you enter until after you've pressed the enter key. And that's not the program's fault, that's the operating system which provides, which takes the input from you, the user, and uh, feeds it into the program itself. 